Man, it feels good in here, doesn't it? You guys feel as good as I do? <laughs> you can't have a bad time in the presence of God. <laughs> and if you're having a bad time, you should get in the presence of God. <laughs> and you'll start having a better day. Because you guys know this, but the Lord's not just in church meetings. We can have Him 24-7. And that's the goal. But um, my name is Chris. That was Greg that was just up here a minute ago. Aaron was up here before that. I hope you guys are starting to get the feel that there's no one-man show here. Have you kind of gotten that idea so far? Uh, I'm going to blow your mind, maybe. There is no senior pastor at the Father's house. Everybody's like looking at me like, what do you mean? We believe that the senior leader is Jesus Christ. And we mean that. That's not like just a cool thing to say. Like we do it in practice. So the Father's house is actually based on eldership and specifically the plurality of eldership, which means uh, two to three guys that are submitted one to another and to the Lord govern the local body. Now, you might wonder, where did we get that idea? We got it from the New Testament. <laughs> Anybody like the Bible? <laughs> Just because you don't see something in your world doesn't mean that it's not in the Bible. Amen. I know I'm talking slow. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you don't see something in your normal practice doesn't mean that it's not a biblical thing. And I'm not talking about that tonight because that's a whole subject in and of itself. But we probably have a little bit of a different model than, than maybe what you've seen. Surely different than what I've grown up in and seen. I've been in church for 40 years, and I can tell you this is different uh, than, than anything that I've ever done before. Uh, but man, it just feels good in here. I just, I just don't really hardly want to do anything else. Um, and I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, I, I will say this. Any of you guys that actually know me know that typically... I bring a message that I have spent 20, 30, 40 hours preparing for, and I'll have 50 scriptures, and I'll put them on the screen, and I'll have my laptop, and uh, Jared knows. he's. I've preached at his church twice in the last month, and we just about had a word overdose. Um, but hey, I wanted to mention that too. I got my buddy Jared up here, and I got Adam Knapp came to see me, my buddy John Willard. I've got some guys that, that are just trusted uh, ministry friends from, from out of state, or no, I guess some of you are out of state. Virginia, South Carolina. He's North Carolina, but it should be out of state because it's like five hours away. It's on the coast. But um, just welcome. It's, it's awesome to have you guys here and showing support. But um, man, oh man, I really believe that, that we could just worship forever, which we will. You guys, you guys like to worship? If you stick around here for any length of time, you'll notice that that's going to be a theme. <laughs> And it's going to be something that we are completely devoted and dedicated to is, is worship. Not just in a musical sense, but in, in life. Man, I just, I just want to pray. I know we've been doing a lot of prayer, but I just, I just want to pray. Can we do that? Yes. Father, oh God, we just love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you that you are not distant. We thank you that you are not far off, but that, Lord, you draw near to us, God, and that you are near to us. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we don't take it for granted, God, that we can come in a place like this and we can sense your closeness and your presence. We can sense you moving. And Lord, we just, we want to honor you, Lord, more than any other thing tonight, God. If we didn't do another thing, God, I want you to feel honored tonight, Jesus. I want you to feel loved. I want you to feel blessed tonight, God. That is the number one for me. That is the deal breaker, God. We want to honor you. We want to love you, God, with all that we are. And we just bless you, Jesus. And we just commit all of this to you tonight. In Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord. You guys doing good? Yeah. Hey, can somebody, there's one of these lights that will turn on up above your head so I can actually see you. It's on that little post right there if somebody wants to try to grab that. I don't know which one it is, but it's going to be the lights over the, hey, that'll work. Good. I like to see you guys. It was kind of a little dark in here. Hey, first of all, uh, where are you guys all from? Are, are you guys locals or are you guys from a little ways off or just shout it out. Where are you guys from? Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Tulsa, Oklahoma. Come on. I do. Awesome. I think he did come the farthest. Where else are you guys from? Come on, just shout it out. Hey. Ash County. Yeah, I love Ash County. Who else? Lincoln County. Lincoln County. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I see you guys on Facebook. I know you are. Where else? Moravian Falls. Moravian Falls. I've been there. <laughs> I drove through there one time. No, I, I used to, I, I lived there for several years up on a mountain. It was beautiful. Okay. Indiana? Cool. Of course, John, my buddy's from South Carolina. Got my dad here to, in Edie, South Carolina. Where y'all? Columbia, the uh, armpit of the South. It stays 100 all during July. It never stops hardly. It, and 100% humidity. I grew up there. Whew. I like the mountains. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Who else? Adam? Lynchburg, Virginia. Lynchburg, Virginia. He's up there keeping all them college students straight in Lynchburg. <laughs> Who else? Where are we at? Who are we missing? Is that everybody? Of course, Jared's from the coast. Man, I'm just so, like, just kind of lingering. I just, do you, when you feel the presence of God like that, you just kind of don't want to just, like, like, fly off to something else. Do you know what I'm talking You know what I'm talking about. You just kind of get here and you go, ooh, just kind of settle in a minute. But I do want to share some stuff with you. Um, one other practical note. Uh, I'm just trying, here's what I was trying to say a minute ago about my preparation stuff. I typically get up here with tons and tons of, of message and all this. And the Lord was very clear to me tonight to just get up here and share my heart with you. And obviously there will be scripture because my heart is full of scripture. But I have no notes and no laptop and no screens. I'm just going to be sharing what the Lord has been doing in our hearts over the last couple of years. And so you'll see a different side of me this time. And the next time you probably see a word bath. You guys like the Bible? Yeah. I am a word freak, man. I love the Bible. Never go a day without reading the Bible. It's my daily bread. But uh, a practical note that I wanted to share with you guys. How many of you guys know a guy named Jeremiah Johnson? Does anybody know Jeremiah? Okay. So Jeremiah is a good friend of mine, Lakeland, Florida. They've got Heart of the Father ministry down there. And uh, over these last couple years of processing what the Lord was asking us to do, it became very clear to him and to me that he was supposed to be involved in this. And so Jeremiah Johnson and Heart of the Father is actually overseeing this church. Okay, so we are accountable to them. It's all relational. There's no hierarchy structure. It's just a relational uh, accountability. And he will actually be down here uh, within the next 30 to 60 days. He will be here and we'll do a whole weekend Friday, Saturday, Sunday deal. Uh, and we will just lay a lot of New Testament foundations. So you guys want to come back for that for sure and bring about 10 people that you know. But uh, Jeremiah... Uh, is getting ready to have a baby probably like today or tomorrow. <laughs> his wife is, is full term. Uh, and so y'all pray for him and Morgan as his wife that their fourth child will arrive safely. And uh, we bless them. So you'll see Jeremiah coming in and out of here. He'll come at least, you know, a couple times a year. The guy's got the most insane schedule of any human being I've ever met. But he has committed that he will come here uh, at least twice a year, you know, for a whole big weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of deal. So if you, if you think that's cool, say amen. Awesome. So... Uh, how many of you guys like these cool banners and stuff we got everywhere? I love stuff like that. I think it's just so so nice to have. But uh, this is basically the heartbeat and the mission of what the Lord has called us to do. And I know maybe some of this is going to look generic, but I'm going to go to each sign. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what we're doing. So obviously, we have been worshiping for the entire time that we have been here tonight. But worship is absolutely number one. So worship is loving God more than anything else. If that ever becomes secondary to anything we're doing, we will get off track. You guys agree? So worship, you go to Matthew 22, somebody came to Jesus and said, what, is, you know, what basically is the most important thing in life? What do you tell them? You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So that is absolutely our number one. There's not even a close second. You guys tracking with me? We're not just saying we love God like we really love God and we really want to love him more. 
Do you remember the Ephesian church in Revelation? He said, I have this one thing against you. You lost your first love. We want to be a people that are white, hot, passionate, on fire, in love with Jesus. You guys, you guys with me? Because lukewarm doesn't work. You guys hear me? Lukewarm is not going to work in this hour. I think Aaron stood up here and said that, that it's not business as usual anymore. So we absolutely have as probably the greatest desire of our heart to worship Jesus with all that we've got. Now these first two banners actually are the great two commandments, the two greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. So the community, and I think that's what Greg was speaking to, is that family, okay? We have no interest in building a church as an organizational thing. Okay? What we have an interest in doing is building the family of God in a region on planet Earth that manifests Him to the people around us. You getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And so worship and community are number one and number two priorities of the Father's house. And they are actually in that order because you want to know what? I just have to say this. Most churches are built for people. Yeah. This one's actually going to be built for the Lord. What I mean by that is we're actually hosting the presence of God and, and ministering to Him primarily before we minister to people. Does that make sense? Because what happens is if you, got, if you have ministry to people as your number one and ministry to the Lord as your number two, it's not going to work. Are you tracking with me? This is super important. If the ministry to the people becomes greater than the ministry to the Lord, we're going to have an issue. If, if the ministry to the people of the house is, is not as great as the ministry to the God of the house, it's going to get off track somewhere. Are you, you guys are looking at me like, what are you talking about? Do you understand this? So we will always, 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 always put Jesus first. And there's enough of us that are all accountable to one another that if any one of us starts slipping on that, we will call each other on it. So we will be like, hey, man. Put Jesus first, bro. So we are well-connected people that will keep us straight. I have more people in my life that will call me out than you can imagine. That's a good thing. Amen. So worship, number one. Community, number two. Now, I think Greg was speaking to this a little bit, too. But I'll give you some more of the backstory. About two years ago, the Lord absolutely shut me down from all ministry. And I was doing a lot of ministry at the time. And the Lord kind of put me, I felt like, in a cave. I was like, Lord, what are you doing? I mean, are you punishing me? I mean, what is going on? And during this season, I'll be honest with you, it was in 2016. It was literally the worst year of my life. Everything was just topsy-turvy, upside down. Like, Lord, what are you doing to me? But through this time, the Lord disconnected me from everything and then started re-downloading into my heart what He actually wanted to see. So anything that we're doing tonight is not Chris's vision or anybody else's vision. This is something the Lord said, hey, I actually would like to see this happen. You getting the difference there? So we didn't get around in the room and say, what would be some cool stuff that we could do? <laughs> no, the Lord said, there's things on my heart that I want done. Will you do it? It was much more that way, right? And so the community aspect of this, the Lord basically told me that. He said, I want you to build a community. And I said, okay, well, you're going to have to teach me about that. And so for the last 15 months, the Lord has been teaching us practically and in reality what community is. Uh, many of the people that are in this room have actually met together every Sunday for the last 15 months. So this is not just, this is just the first time it's kind of been out in the public sphere. But we have been living community. We have been learning to love one another through all of our mess. How I many you know it's messy when you get in a room for people and you get close? See, the reason people focus on ministry instead of relationship is because it's way easier not to get deep into people's junk. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you do real community, you actually like really like see each other. Does that scare you to death or does that excite you? It's probably a mixture of both, right? But real community is the most valuable thing if you can make yourself go there. Now, some people run from it, I get it, and some people have been looking for it their whole life. Most people actually, if they saw real community, they would drop everything they're doing to be a part of it. 
because that's what God created us for, for deep connectedness, deep fellowship, one-on-one relationships. And so we mourn with those who mourn. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We eat a lot of meals together. Uh, There's something very spiritual that happens when you eat with people. I can't explain it. I, I, I don't know how it works, but it does. I'm serious. When you eat meals with people, you get closer to them. It's the weirdest thing. But we have been focused on that. And just as a practical note, too, for the next six weeks, we're actually going to meet in here. But I want you to understand, this is never going to be the main event. I might throw a curveball at you right here. This right here will never be the main event. This will be part of what we do. We believe in groups and gatherings. This is a gathering, a large gathering, right? But we believe in small fellowships, groups that come together to where you can't hide from one another. You get what I'm saying? Because, I mean, we could fill this place up with, with people and have the best worship service ever, and everybody in the room could hide from each other and leave without even, you get what I'm saying, without any connection. So there's value in the large meetings, and there's value in the small meetings, and we believe in both. We don't believe that's supposed to be an either or. We believe that's supposed to be an and both. You guys, you guys feeling that? So what we will do is the first Sunday of every month, starting the month of September, it'll be six weeks from today, is we will not meet here, but the congregation, whether it's 50 people or 500 people, we will be in homes all over these different regions. We'll be here, we'll be in Hickory, we'll be in Statesville, we'll be in Ash, we'll be all over, and we will all be in people's homes, and we will share meals together, and we will take communion together, and we will actually get to know one another and not just look at the back of people's heads. Amen. What do you think about that? Come on. Anybody excited or you guys kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Come on. It's an invitation to community. Real, genuine, messy community where you don't hide from the Lord or each other. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Have we, have we experienced this? <laughs> You get close to people, man, it all starts coming out. And then you remember the second commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you get to practice that. So community is what we're building. Uh, I will say this. I was in a funeral about six or seven years ago, and I was sitting on the second row. And the place was packed because it was somebody that was really loved and someone that had passed away. And and so everybody came together and it was a bunch of people in the room that I knew didn't like each other because I knew a lot of them. Being honest, right? And I'm looking at this whole room of people that I know some of them don't like each other, but everybody unified at this funeral to honor this person. And I'm sitting there on the second row, and the Lord hits me like a lightning bolt. And he said, community always trumps organization. And boy, it changed me from that moment. And that was years ago. But now we're practically putting these things into action. We're practically putting these into place. So we will have big meetings. I mean, this is just a start. Uh, the Lord has shown me things that, that I believe we will have a large impact and a scope in this region, in this area. Uh, but we will always, always, always keep this small, close-knit, family, uh, interactive uh, deal. You guys, you guys tracking with that? In addition to the first Sunday doing that, we will in the fall probably be able to establish multiple small groups that can meet through the week as well. Uh, We also do weekly prayer meetings. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. The prayer meetings that we have had in the last year have been like literally the most powerful meetings that we've had out of everything, like hands down. Our prayer meetings have been off the charts because when you pray, the Lord moves. And so our prayer meetings have been absolutely like a humongous focus. I think Aaron may have said that uh, about our website. I haven't launched the website. It is ready, but you'll see that what he's talking about. We've got a big button there that just says prayer, and it undergirds everything that we're doing here at this church. So moving along, equipping. These are the first you know, two commandments, the greatest commandments. These two are actually the Great Commission. 
So when you move to Matthew 28, it's, it's obvious Jesus says, Hey, look, guys, I'm going back to the Father. I want you guys to go and teach people everything I've taught you, baptize them in the name. You know, you understand this. And then get people saved and brought into the kingdom. So the equipping, Ephesians chapter 4, you guys have all read Ephesians chapter 4. The fivefold ministry was given for what purpose? To equip the saints, okay? So if we're not equipping you to do what God's called you to do, we're a complete failure in this venture, right? This is not a spectator deal where a couple gifted people get up and just talk to you all the time. You hearing this? We want to equip people to do what God's called you to do. Okay, that's Ephesians chapter 4. So the fivefold ministry is all about equipping outreach. I think I hear one of my kids down there screaming, but he'll be okay. <laughs> Outreach, obviously, is evangelism. Uh, how many of you guys know that we have a desperately lost world all around us that is on their way to hell? I don't think that that's in our consciousness as deep as it needs to be. Because if we really truly thought that there's people around us that are going to bust hell wide open, we're going to do something to try to stop them. Okay? What do people want more than anything, whether they know it or not? They want love. Okay, God is love. This family that we're building here is based on love. We have everything that the world needs. We have, we have the secret. We have the, we have the best thing going on planet Earth. We have the kingdom of God. Okay, so if we keep this to ourselves, we are absolutely missing the boat. I have to tell you another emphatic thing the Lord told me when he was talking to me about this in the beginning. He said, this will not be a country club. It was emphatic. You know what a country club is? Like us four no more? Exclusive. You know, we got our little thing and you're out. You, you get what I'm saying? The clicky, all that stuff. The Lord said very emphatically, this will never be a country club. And so, trust me, that's something that struck the fear of the Lord in me. But I was like, okay, Lord, yes, this will never be a country club. But I'm going to tell you what happens. If you have all equipping and no outreach, you do become a country club. If you have all outreach and no equipping, you become the babysitter's club. Seriously. When you have equipping and outreach together, you have a healthy body. Okay, so what we're doing is we have given ourselves to these four things and we have prayed and prayed and prayed and sought God to get strategies from heaven to understand how to practically live this stuff out. How I many you know the gospel is both supernatural and practical? Yes. I'm all about miracles. I'm all about signs and wonders. I mean, I'm all about all of that. I'm also about practically the Lord says do something, you do it. Everybody, everybody's looking at me like, what is this guy doing? I'm all about obeying what the Lord has told us to do. And whether we want to get deep into this or not, these are commandments. These are commandments. The great commandments, the great commission, these were not suggestions. These were spoken by Jesus himself to his followers. So this is what we're committing our lives to. Now, do I think that we will be perfect at any of it? No, heck no. But do I think that we're going to give it all we got and we're going to keep trying until we get better and better and better and better? Yes, absolutely. And so we're committed to following the Lord in these areas. And so I want to also put this out here. Over the last 15 months, we have had several, multiple, really powerful encounters with the glory of God. Okay, just talked about the supernatural. We have had times where the Lord has moved so strongly and has come so overpoweringly that we, we just couldn't function. Do you remember when you read the thing about the, the glory filled the temple and the ministers couldn't minister and that kind of thing? We, we have had these encounters and our heart is for that to happen, not with a few, but with many. Our heart is that the glory of God would absolutely infiltrate a whole region you guys hear what I'm saying? Okay, the glory does not come from us, it comes from Him. But as we seek Him and as we keep doing what we're doing, I'm telling you, this glory of God just comes. You guys, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever felt this weighty glory of God to where you literally, like, you don't know what to do with yourself? Okay, we're going to have 
a lot of time in the glory of God. Does, any, does that excite anybody? Yeah. That excites the heck out of me. Because honestly, when you have tasted the glory of God, you can't settle for anything else. You just can't. Everything else kind of is boring. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Can I be a very honest preacher? Without the glory, this is all going to be very boring. And I don't do boring. God's not boring. We are. But God's not boring. And when the glory comes, there's several things that are going to happen. I love what Jeremiah says all the time. He says, when the glory comes, you're going to hit the floor or you're going to hit the door. Because you have to do something. I mean, you're either going to run from it or you're going to put your face on the ground. And what we've been doing is we've literally, physically, literally been putting our face on the ground and the glory has been absolutely off the charts. Does that interest anybody? So we are seeking the Lord. We're not seeking things and people and stuff and we're seeking the Lord, but this is an expression of his heart that he has shared with us. Uh, I will say this too, uh, and I'm not trying to be grandiose here because I just hear and obey, but one thing that the Lord did show us about the Father's house is he said, if you put a dot you know, right here where we're at in the center of Wilkesboro, the, the, the impact would be regional, that it would be an hour in every direction from Wilkesboro. That's what he showed us. I mean, literally on a map, he showed us an hour in every direction. And honestly, it's kind of like that. We've, all, we've already had people coming like for this last year. Hardly anybody lives right here. Almost everybody drives from further away. It's really wild. I don't know why it's like that, but it's just true. Uh, but this is going to have a regional impact uh, for the glory of God. I have to say this too on the outreach piece. One thing that the Lord also put on our hearts uh, and gave us a burden for was the drug addicted. And I don't know where it is or how it is where you live, but here it's an absolute epidemic. It is absolutely destroying people. I mean, it is sucking the life out of people. And I know in my heart that Jesus Christ can set you free from any addiction. We got several of them in the room that have been living examples of this. So we have a heart to help those who absolutely have nothing to offer or nothing to give. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? So we're going to go after the people that might not be getting connected with the family of God. Does this make sense what I'm saying? Yes. We're going to go after those that are like really, really lost. We're not trying to have a really clean, pretty, polished production here. We're actually trying to win the lost. It's going to be messy. You remember in Proverbs 14 where it talks about, yeah, it's nice to have a clean stall, but if you want to get some work done, you're going to have to have some oxes and you know they're going to make a mess. Basically, I remember what the Lord told Rick Joyner one time. He said, if you build this the way that I'm telling you to, you're going to have to have a really big pooper scooper. You're going to have to clean up a lot of mess. So does that scare you or does that excite you? Okay, because you want to know what? When you see a person that is just completely desperately addicted get delivered and free, I'm telling you, man, if that don't light your fire then you're dead. <laughs> Shalom back there is getting excited. <laughs> We're going to go after these people. Can I tell you this? I love you if you're saved, and I love you if you're church folks, but you're not my target. The Lord asked me to leave the 99 and go after the one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a place where the presence of God and the glory of God comes and we're going to get the lost, the most lost people we can find in that presence of God and just let him wreck their lives in a good way. Is that exciting? I love it. So <laughs> I've been in church my whole life and I love church folks, but I'm telling you, man, I can't be a good church folk and have people dying all around me going to hell. Come on, man. So we're going to actually do something somehow, and the Lord's given us the plans right now, but we are going to do radical things to try to go and get the harvest. You know, they're not just going to like show up. They're not going to just come. You have to go get them. 
You have to go find them. What did Jesus say? Go in the highways, go in the hedges. We're literally going to put billboards up in this county that says Jesus is better than your drugs and then put the address here. I mean, we're going to go like confront this stuff head on. I mean, we're going to go after these people. And if you've ever hung out with these guys, you know that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. They'll lie to you. They'll steal from you. But you want to know what? Somebody's got to help them. Who's going to help them? And I'm not, I'm not casting shade or throwing shade on anything that's already going on, but I do know this for a bona fide fact. There are more churches in Wilkes County than probably like anywhere in the world. I mean, there's like, I mean, I think there's over 600 in this one county. And yet we have like the biggest epidemic of drugs I've ever seen, right? So there's a disconnect somewhere. You got 600 churches and you have a drug epidemic where people are lost and going to hell. There's something that's not connecting. And so we're trying to get with the Lord about God. How can we bridge that gap? So it's probably going to look messy. Is that good for you guys? Yes. We're going to talk about this. And I'll tell you this too. Each one of these, you know, four pillars here that we're, that we're talking about, we'll, we're going to devote a week to each one of those. Like, I mean, like we'll come in here and teach a whole time just on worship. We'll come in here and teach just on community a whole time. We'll teach on equipping. We'll teach on outreach. Uh, and then we're going to actually go do these things. So does that sound interesting? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Matthew chapter 7 probably keeps me straight more than any scripture in the Bible. You remember this thing where Jesus said, many are going to come to me in that day and they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils? Did we not do all the stuff? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. That scripture has always been like, what in the world? But you know what the key is in that verse? He says it right after this. He says, the one who will enter is the one who does the will of my father. So we really only have one goal here, and that is to do the will of the Father. There's no one man kind of ambitious, like, let's go do this, that, and the other. No, we are here to seek God and to do what he says. I know that sounds simple, but, but in the practical living and doing of it, it's actually very, very difficult if you've ever tried it. Have anybody tried to do the will of the Father instead of your own? That's actually called Christianity. <laughs> Seriously? So we're trying to be Christians is all we're doing here. So the Lord did tell us about this, and, and I'm, I'm done. I just wanted to kind of shoot from the hip a little bit and share my heart. But this worship and community deal, this sounds humorous, but the Lord kind of told it to me this way. He said, if you can get the first and second commandment down, then I'll give you something else to do. <laughs> so right now, we're really trying to get this part right and if we can get this right the Lord's going to give us more things to do does that make sense we're going to love God with all we've got and we're going to like for real love each other and then the Lord is going to allow us to go after people and to equip them to be just like Jesus that's the Bible yeah. praise the Lord man oh man I've, I'm, I'm usually a lot more excited and like, ah, I'm just, I'm so like just whew, tonight. I just, I think it's just that presence of God is still just, I could literally just lay on the floor like Heidi Baker does for an hour and not do anything. Probably would have been a good idea. That's when the glory comes. You get your face on the floor and <laughs> God, I feel that right now. That's what we're about, guys. Sure. So here's probably a good idea. I think I should probably pray for somebody because I just I feel that glory coming now. Is anybody hungry for Jesus tonight? 